How's it going everyone? My name is Frontier Setter, and this is my Air 15 PDW build. If you do want to see my artistic adventure building this damn thing, click on the top card here. In this video, I'm going to be talking about all the parts I picked and why I picked them, and um, yeah. So with that said, let's get to it. So for the upper and lower, I went with an Aero Precision pistol, a 10.5 inch barrel. And the nice thing about Arrow is that they give you a really good quality for that hashtag poor zone price. So you can kind of consider this a budget build, but not like terrible quality budget, but like a decent quality budget. A value build. And plus, each time I see the logo, I always go, ah! So for the back end, I went with SP Tactical's PDW Brace. Now, I know that there are other way cheaper options than this out there, but the thing is, I just like how this one looks. Because aesthetics over everything. It is easily collapsible with one hand if you just push this little button here, push down, and it extends easy too if you just pull it hard enough. Similar to other things, which does cut down on learning curve. Plus, because it is a brace and not a stock, you do not have to fill out a Form 1, and also makes transporting to different states a little easier. But the aforementioned brace does come with some drawbacks. The intended use of these pistol braces is basically you just kind of take your hand and you just slam it right into uh, the rear end of it, spreading it wide open. But the problem is when you actually shoulder the stock, um, when you shoulder the brace, this rubber kind of tends to collapse in on itself, so it's kind of flimsy. The Lunar Concepts split fix is that it comes with this little bit of Velcro strap here that cinches it down, so you don't have to worry about the stability of the overall rubber itself, making it a lot more solid. It does not change the function of the brace, so ATF can also swerve off. The pistol did come with kind of a shitty mill spec stage one trigger, so what I did to upgrade this trigger simply was to strip the trigger out of my Ruger SR5. 556 and I just kind of put it into this one. The Ruger SR556 actually has a pretty decent two-stage trigger and we will ghost this now. As you can see, really minimal take up in the wall and then crisp break here. Ah, and then the reset. You can see the reset. Nice and positive and then the wall again. Oof, nice crisp, crisp break. And I am currently selling a Ruger 556 uh, with a shitty trigger. Big Brain Mode is buying a full gun and the stripping parts from that to putting it on your cheaper gun. So inside, I did replace the stock buffer with a Spikes Tactical T2 buffer. The nice thing about these buffers is that they have this tungsten powder sand inside, so it's supposed to kind of soften recoil as the sand kind of just jiggles in there, I guess. You feel it and it feels like a bag of sand when you're touching it. The handguard I picked, or the front rail, is the BCM MCMR rail. 
Key mod stocks are down, M lock stocks are up. So invest heavily in the M lock. I'll take your entire stock. It is a sleek, lightweight rail. Looks really good and feels good in the hand. Totally recommend that shit. This is the Caw Valley Precision Linear Compensator. Linear comps basically just shoot super big fireballs right in front of you. I guess Liu Kang can demonstrate some of that shit. But a more utilitarian function of them is because it directs all the blasts forward. You don't have the, uh, the muzzle blast from the sides, which could really fuck you up in close quarters uh, type scenarios, which is what this kind of thing was meant to do. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to stand. Things are spinning. So for the foregrip itself, this is a Strike Industries SI Link curved grip. Now I originally had this BCM vertical grip installed, but because of length issues, I went with this to avoid any kind of ATF confrontation. The nice thing about this is it fits both key mod and M lock, so it doesn't matter what you get. This fits both of those platforms. And it just feels cool. It looks cool. You know, it keeps your hand away from this danger zone part of the gun. Speaking of vertical grips, I changed out the default A2 grip with this Magpul K2 grip. What it's supposed to do is supposed to angle your wrist in a more neutral position when you have it kind of close to your body here. When you have the stock all the way in, your grip tends to be kind of vertical just because how uh, biomechanics work. So it just makes it a lot more comfortable to operate in close quarters. And as I mentioned before in my build video, the A2 grip is just ass. A2 grip being completely shit, so I'm gonna just toss that. So for backup sights, I do have the Magpul Embus. Now I know that these are ass, but I basically treat them like any kind of throwaway sight. These are basically just some placeholder sights. This is not my main optic by any means, uh, but it's just nice to have it there in case the main optic does go down. But either way, these are pretty fun to fidget with. Optic here is the Churchicon ACOG TA44. So this is their ACOG, it's a smaller one. This is a 1.5 times magnification. It is an etched reticle with passive lighting, so there's tritium vials inside, as well as this really cool fiber optic rod on the outside. The ring itself is really easy to pick up, but the dot inside is very crisp. It's also sitting on top of an American defense manufacturing QD mount, so in case this does fuck up, I can just rip it off quickly and then use the backup sights. I could not be any more pleased with this optic. It's definitely my favorite one so far that I've tried, and I wouldn't have been able to acquire this if it wasn't for CACMAN. So thank you so much, CACMAN, for hooking up with this sweet deal. This is the Streamlight Protec Rail Mount 2. Streamlight might just be the end-all be-all for budget value lights. Similar to Aero, they make a good product for a really cheap price. It puts out a decent amount of candela and lumens, even when you compare them to the, I don't know, the higher-end lights out there. The ruggedness and reliability still has to be tested, but for right now, I do like it a lot, and it sits quite well on the front of this gun. As you can see, it has momentary on, and the pressure pad here, as well as a constant on. It also comes with a few pore zone zip ties and double-sided sticky tape to mount the actual pressure pad, but we have a better solution for that here. To mount the light, I use the Arisaka 45 degree offset mount. It's an expensive little piece of aluminum, but it does put the light at a 45 degree angle down the barrel of the rifle. Now the advantages of this is having the light closer into the actual body of the gun, which just minimizes a little bit of space, and I think it looks cool. This is Cloud Defensive's LCS, which stands for Light Control System. I have gone full autist mode buying a mount for a pressure pad that connects to a light that is the same price as this mount. It is basically three pieces of aluminum sandwiched together, uh, held in by two screws, and it holds the pressure pad in place. And it also manages the cable. Those two things are super nice to have done in one piece because it just keeps everything nice and compact without having any snacks with the cable. You don't have to use any kind of zip ties or tape or anything like that to hold this down. I think this is just a more elegant solution. It's simple yet effective, and I think it just brings the fore end of this gun together. It just looks really nice and neat. I didn't have to upgrade it, but I wanted to do it anyways. This is the Radian Raptor LT charging handle. Raptors are arguably one of the best ambidextrous charging handles on the market. They make a lot for other OEMs and such. I bought the LT version, which is basically just some polymer around the handles to decrease weight and to save price. Because at the time, I thought $40 was worth it to save. Last but not least is Honky Cowboy's Higo sling. Anyways, this is hands down the most etchy, hottest sling on the market. What is this? 
What is this, Morgan? Oh my hot Roblox! Actually, no longer on the market. This is only because Honky Cowboy is back in Hong Kong, so I do wish him the best of luck and I hope he stays safe. This sling is mounted on some cutie slots here and here. This is really for memes, but it actually came out to be kind of a nice setup for this AR here. I do still need to rattle can spray the Nier Automata 2B dress pattern. I'm thinking I'm gonna kind of overlay it, tilt it to the side, but one of the issues I have is how do I actually get this to be on the gun? I was thinking of kind of getting like painter's tape, putting it on like a cutting mat and just cutting it out painstakingly by hand and then just layering it on. But the problem with that is I have to do it with both sides. I could use stencils, but stencils don't always come out the most clean either. I don't know. Please post some suggestions in the comments if you've done any kind of this fine stencil work on, on spray painting your gun. But yeah, it was supposed to be kind of a budget AR build, but it turned into this kind of semi-expensive, semi-poor, uh, bullshit build here. So I I'm not really sure what to call this anymore. Anyways, that is it for this pistol build. I do hope you enjoyed this video, kind of a simple rundown on all the parts I picked and why I picked them. Future plans, I do want to run this rifle more. I'm trying to find some gun ranges that I can go to that are kind of open in the winter time. If you want to see more of this kind of content, please feel free to like this video, it really does help me a lot. And share with your tactical or weeaboo friends. And always remember to say tactically kawaii.